uh, welcome uh, to our director roundtable discussion, which is scheduled um, at 3.30 before each council meeting. Um, this live stream session is uh, to keep citizens informed on what's happening uh, within our city. We invite you to tune in uh, to these live or watch the recordings later to keep up to date. The department updates have historically been a part of council work sessions. However, oftentimes there's not enough time to go over meaningful updates. So we started doing the director roundtable this year. Um, we're going to, well, hear it with us today. Um, we have Lieutenant Hamrick representing the police department, Lynn Mazur, special projects, Richard Johnson, public works, Shirley uh, Bloodworth Botop, Economic and Community Development, Wayne Dias, Planning D Department, Tom Cool is out today with Parks and Recs, and Richard Peterson uh, with Utilities is at Electric Cities. So, Sherry Lee is going to get us started today. I wanted to start by talking about Fourth of July and how great it was. Uh, I think it was an amazing event. Um, I did want to give kudos, I think I did the last time too, to Public Works and how beautiful the waterfront looked. I mean, just incredible improvements and I think we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more at another time. Um, the next thing, uh, I just wanted to talk about um, our website, our new website, it's finally launching. We've had a lot of technical difficulties and a lot of these things are out of our control because we're dealing with a third party. But um, it is coming, it's coming this week. It'll be, we, we hope, launching uh, Wednesday. That's, that's our goal. So I, I'm pushing as hard as I can for Wednesday. Um, but this, is, this just shows you the uh, cover page. So the home page looks something like this. You see the menu up top, the big buttons for things that um, Jeff and IT, Jeff Montgomery helped us look at where people were going the most. And, and these are the, these are the hot, hot spots for that. So there are the buttons. And then uh, the next slide I don't have control over the slides. So, Jeff, can you forward? Or do you, did you leave me? Uh -oh. Can I Here have? Yeah. There it is. Yeah, I don't think, okay. So that, this is the bottom half of the page. Um, the bottom half of the page will have things, uh, meetings and events and news, really easy to access and then easy way to sign up for Everbridge. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about Everbridge after we run real quick through these slides. But easy to see what's coming up right on the, uh, the website. So. Uh, the first slide was the top part of the page. If you scroll down, that's the second part. Okay, and the next slide. Did it's they give us nice that so you could clean approach, clean design I'm to it sure too? That. Yeah, I'm not sure. There Let me go. see. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> Here's an example. So if you up at the top, these are our uh, menu options. And so if you're hovering over departments, this is an example of what you'll see. It's not completely built out yet, but this is pretty close. Um, and to, to show you, if you scroll down on department and then we go to electric, it will look like this. So it'll take you to public utilities electric department. And under each department, it's gonna be very clear uh, forms that you might need, uh, FAQs on each department. So electric, gas, water, um, we'll all have things that you're looking for in that department will be where they should be and they'll be easy to find. Um, we'll also have uh, contact information, so it'll be very easy to contact someone in each department there. There are a number of ways that you can contact us, but this is one way. Uh, I will show you through Everbridge in a minute too, uh, another easy way for, for us to uh, be contacted. Um, the next slide, this is what it looks like on your mobile phone. So again, really easy to see the buttons are big, which is great. Um, very easy to navigate. And just an example, thing is you, I could, went to you couldn't see it on the cell phone before. I mean, it was the regular website. Exactly. You really couldn't read it. Very hard to read. This is really easy. Um, very interactive, uh, Quail Creek golf course. And actually that beautiful shot of the greens I confirmed today is, is Quail Creek golf course. Mm -hmm. Someone asked me, is that Quail Creek Golf Course? I said, I th yeah, I think it is. So I emailed Jeff Marks. I'm like, can you please tell me, is it? So it's so, the greens are looking so good. Um, but again, very user friendly. And let's go to the next. Um, so this is moving on to Everbridge. And uh, we, we've been talking about launching this crowdsourcing uh, reporting mechanism on Everbridge where through the app on your phone, you can report uh, any problems. So this is an example right now, you're, 
yeah, see Jeff is scrolling around for me. If you see uh, that on your um, online right now, what he's encircling, that you will click that and it will take you here to this next page. Um, this is to report an issue. So you can be driving around and uh, there's a pothole or something and you click uh, category and you'll scroll down. The next slide shows us the different categories. So here are your categories. So you would choose what, where the issue lies. Here, you select that. You type out your, um, the issue that you're having. And the next slide, um, there, that's what it looks like when you type it out and go one more. Down at the bottom, you can also locate yourself. So it's optional, but you can let Public Works know, for example, where you are when you saw that pothole. It will immediately send a message to your department, um, Richard, for someone to get out and take care of it. So it will go into a system um, on your end, how, however each department is managing these work orders. Um, and so we're gonna start, we're, that is ready to go now. Um, and if you go one more, if you're not on Everbridge, it's another reason to sign up. This is how you sign up for mm -hmm. Everbridge. Go ahead and explain what Everbridge is mm -hmm. and where to sign up for yeah, it. Yeah, so Everbridge is a, a notification uh, app, and you can, you can opt to be notified by email or text or both. I do both just to check. Um, it updates you about everything from events to emergencies to council meetings, uh, public meetings. Uh, you can check the things you want to know about. So if you don't want to know about everything, you don't have to. Um, or you can sign up for everything. And you can opt out at any time of any of these. Uh, it also has an option that we just tested out during 4th of July for emergency information. Uh, you can text a code, which we put up on signage around the city during large, large events. So 4th of July, Mardi Gras, Arts and Crafts. Um, if you have that, if a terrible storm like 2014 comes up, you will get an emergency alert from the city telling you take shelter immediately, whatever the emergency is. So um, that's great for tourists who may not know how to get these, um, these alerts from the city. And it's not just that it's coming from, you know, Baldwin County or it's right, it's local, it's right here and what's going on at that minute cause, because our police department and emergency responders will know first. Um, and this is how you sign up. And I cannot read it from here, but it's <laughs> Everbridge uh, forward slash. Can anyone read that? It's, it, it, it's uh, well, I can't read it, but I know yeah. it's fairhopeal.gov. Yeah. Um, forward slash. Is it a forward slash? And then it's Everbridge, one word. Mm -hmm. there, there we go. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, fairhopeal.gov forward slash Everbridge. And this is how you sign up. It's a great, great app. Cool. There we go. All right. Thank you, yeah, Sherry Lee. You. And. All right. The planning department's been busy, of course. Uh, this is a, a, a busy time in the past couple of years. As we know, the uh, development's increased. We've got a lot of projects going on. Um, I would, would want to compliment our staff, the planning staff, and, and others who are involved in the development process, like Richard Johnson, Richard Peterson. We review a lot of applications. Uh, we go through those applications with a fine-tooth comb, make sure everything's completed and everything is as it should be, and uh, we have a good team that work together. We actually have meetings, uh, multi-departmental meetings, where we look at these together, and I think it's worked really well. And through the help of Richard Peterson, Richard Johnson, and their, their people, I think it's worked out real well, and we're getting very, very, uh, when developments are ready to be approved, they have done everything that they're supposed to do, which I think is very encouraging. also want to compliment the Planning Commission and the Board of Adjustments. These are volunteer boards that are um, people, citizens, average people make these boards up. They make decisions every day that impact the city. Um, they, it's, a, it's a thankless job because a lot of times you do get criticism and do get uh, people are unhappy many times, but uh, they do a very good job in uh, analyzing these projects and, and, and um, I'm, I'm very proud of how that's going. Um, you know, we have, as with most places in Baldwin County, you do have a lot of public that turns out these meetings and express their concerns, which I, which I think is a very important part of that process to hear from the public and hear what their concerns are. And as we go forward, we try to uh, find ways to meet those concerns. We can't solve every problem at all, but if there's issues we need to address, we certainly will. So that's been a very, uh, very uh, good process, I think. And we have a very good dialogue at the Planning Commission meetings and the Board of Adjustments. I think our last Planning Commission meeting was about 
how long? About three and a half hours, Richard, something like that. <laughs> four hours, four hours, um, and, and about four one. projects. And, and so we each project got a sufficient amount of airtime and and got vetted and fleshed out, which is a, which is a good thing. But uh, and that's how it's supposed to work. And we're very happy of how that's going. Um, and people are showing concern. And I think staff are bringing good applications, making a very good presentation. And these boards are asking very good questions of staff and of the applicants uh, to make sure that when things are approved, they are to the benefit of the city and the benefit of everybody else. And it's not a detriment to other people. Um, obviously, things do change. That that's that's part of uh, growth and and part of life, especially in a, a place like Baldwin County in the city of Ferret, which is the fastest growing city in the state. Things will change. The, the struggle is, and, and I think what we're trying to ensure is, is that when there is change, it's positive change, and it does bring benefits to the city and the citizens. And so that's our goal, is trying to make sure that happens. Um, as we move forward, we've got a lot of interesting projects that are going on. Um, we have a visual preference survey that we're uh, hoping to get started. Um, as we mentioned before, that's a process to where um, we hear a lot about what we don't like. This is a place and a time to tell us what you do like. And that is done through a series of photographs and, uh, and exhibits. And so we can visually see things that we like or don't like. It's very difficult to tell someone what, what this looks like without being able to see it. This, this way we'll be able to see it and be able to have a very good method of determining what is acceptable and what is what is desired outcome in Fairhope, which then translates into uh, regulations and, and guidelines that will benefit, will help achieve that particular goal that has been set and has been adopted by the city to move forward with. So that's a very, very exciting process. As you know, as, as the mayor has mentioned before, with the Restore Act funds, we also have a comfort plan that we're hoping to get underway soon. Um, this plan, as we've stated before also, will uh, sort of tie in all these things together. It'll tie in uh, the desired development along with uh, ensuring that we have the appropriate infrastructure in place from the standpoint of water and sewer utilities and those things, roads, uh, those sort of things as we move forward to meet the demand of, of the new population. Um, we'll be able to forecast and, and go ahead and make improvements ahead, ahead of the development. So we're not behind the eight ball, so to speak, when you do have new developments. So that's a very exciting, uh, exciting process that will be uh, very, very citizen engaged and we need the feedback from the people to understand and know what Ferrup wants to become, and so that's a very exciting part. So that's just getting started. That's in the future, and uh, we're looking forward to that as well. So a lot of a lot of fun things coming up. A lot of interesting things. Again, you know, I think we all want to look back one day and say, "Have we made a difference in the city of Ferrup? Have we done something good?" And um, that's my whole goal is is being able to say one day I'm, I contributed and um, and did my part, and uh, something I can be proud of as we look back. So um, that's exciting, and we're looking forward to that. And again welcome all the participation from the citizens and the public um, as that's an important, they, probably the most important process and, and aspect of this process. So looking forward to that. So, thank, thank you, you so much. And I am excited. Well, Lieutenant Hamrick? The police department has been busy as well, obviously with 4th of July, which a um, huge success in my opinion. Uh, probably one of the smoothest 4th of July afternoons that I can remember, to be honest with you. Um, we, uh, got everybody in and out of town safely which is the the goal and it went really well people were uh extremely understanding and patient i don't know what was in the water that night but it was <laughs> wonderful um we had a had a good crowd but you know and, and it is a task for, for everybody to get in and out i appreciate everybody's patience on waiting for that pedestrian traffic to ease up before we let those cars move coming off of north beach i know that they have to sit there and wait for 30 minutes at least, sometimes longer than that before uh, we let them move, but we have so many people on the streets walking back to their vehicles that you really can't go anywhere anyhow. So anyhow, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun and it went really, really well. Also want to um, plug the, the back to school event for the red, white, and blue, which is not this weekend, but the, the, the next weekend, July 21st. And I will uh, mention it again, every opportunity I get, keep it fresh on people's minds, but it's going to be at the Methodist Church um, on the south side of their property there and uh, where they've got some really, really nice shady oak trees. It'll be, it, was, it was really a nice place to have it last year, and it'll, it'll be a good place to do it again this year. It was um, quite a success, and so we're expecting a lot of people, uh, a lot of kids. Look forward to handing out a lot of uh, school supplies, and I think there's going to be some, uh, 
some other things, maybe some haircuts available and some things of that nature uh, like we did last year. So I encourage everybody to, to come out. And if you know, uh, uh, when, of course, you know, we're, this is servicing our school area here. I'm not, no, I hate to leave anybody out, but we're, we're trying to take care of the citizens of Fairhope. So there may be a, um, you know, a, a, an ID required to, to verify an address or something like that. We want to try to keep our resources here locally. So, uh, but if you know somebody that, uh, whose child could, uh, could use a help in that area, please come out and see us next Saturday. Very good. Thank you so much. And... Richard Johnson. Yes, ma'am. Uh, again, it's uh, been a, a busy July so far in public works. There's a couple of uh, you know, benchmark activities, and, and, and sometimes public works projects are not as out in front as other projects. But one of the ones that uh, I'm excited to kind of tell you is coming to completion uh, is the significant drainage project that is done in conjunction with the redevelopment of the area known as Portico. <laughs> Uh, we were out there today uh, we knew that as they upgraded that drainage which we have approached through a private public partnership we are uh, probably by wednesday going to be tied into the public system and that project will be complete it's going to make a significant difference in in the flooding issue that occurs in that area uh, on fairhope avenue and it's really been a great project that has delivered great value to the city uh, after visiting and, and walking all of that work you know our partnership level was uh, to provide the pipe and the boxes, which is about $97,000, but that project is probably worth to the city uh, closer to $300,000. So that's a, that's a real good win for everybody. Um, kind of just as a, as a kind of a, a primer uh, and something to look forward to, you know, we started uh, a few months back looking at our municipal peer area and those areas for opportunity for, for improvements. One of them that was budgeted for was a replacement of the, the bathroom at North Beach that's farthest to the south. Uh, because of timelines and everything else, we made a decision that we would not decommission that bathroom until after Labor Day, the, the height of the season. But we, we're fin finalizing plans for the new bathroom. Uh, I am uh, forwarding a copy to, to, to Rick Heinrich, who's kind of our ADA compliance, to make sure that we've, we've met that goal of ADA compliance and that been working with, with our other uh, uh, department heads to make sure that the, uh, the vernacular and aesthetics are pleasing. Uh, we, you know, we want to keep with a, a look that, that, that complements that. And we will be retrofitting the uh, bathroom that's northernmost in the park to meet ADA compliance. Fortunately, that bathroom's floor plan allows for some, some minor adjustments to achieve that, and we're going to have to do some accessibility at the, at the porch area. So we're excited about that. <coughs> Our goal is to have that out for bid um, and and have that bid, that contract ready to go so that as soon as Labor Day is beyond us, we can demo that building and get a contract in there so that as we get to the spring of next year, we'll have a new bathroom facility there. Um, and in addition, we are uh, working on uh, getting the stairs that access uh, those areas above the parks down below the bluff. Uh, there are two sets um, uh, at South Beach, then there's one that comes directly off the bluff right there down, uh, right immediately behind the fireman's hall, and then there's another set that's a little further uh, to the north on North Beach. And uh, we fortunately have money in our side and trails uh, budget for public works, and our goal is to get those uh, out and replaced as well. They just they're just in a poor state of maintenance. The material, the wood, has aged, and, and they're just becoming hard to service. So we're, we're continuing trying to, to knock off those small things that add to the quality of life and, and also the public use of our amenity. So we're excited about those, those items that we're, we're kind of pushing forward. And, uh, you know, it just, it's just a, it goes with those other things that are in the process, whether it be the clubhouse at the golf course, which is really, uh, it looks like a different building today, and, and it's not even quite finished yet and uh, just continue to, to, to improve our, our facilities and our amenities for our citizens. So we're excited about all that. And Richard and I work pretty closely together on when citizen feedback, when I get a lot of citizen feedback either about, you know, we're refining this process, but uh, either, you know, safety, um, street crossings, uh, stairs falling down, whatever it is, accessibility, 
um, I'll pass that on and then we kind of coordinate communication on that too and then what do we need to do to address it is it something we include in a larger grant opportunity depending on how big the scope is or you know is it something that he just adds to his ever-growing list um, so the stairs were some of those you know East, I know that um, East Central Repertory Theater uses those during their performances and you know on the other side we have a lot of runners and we've had comments over the last you know several months uh, or year about the safety of those so Absolutely. slowly but surely checking them off and also you're adding the showers for uh, yes we're mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah for the vibrio awareness um, that we're working on with the health department right and that's going to be located near the pier we did right. a site visit last week and 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 looked at the locations you want to talk about the yeah, best spots our, our goal is is basically kind of somewhere between the beach and the parking interface uh, will be three locations that will be your typical beach outdoor showers meaning mm -hmm. that they'll, they'll have uh, some kind of slab foundation with a cedar or cypress type uh, pallet so that you're not standing in the water and it'll have uh, uh, basically a shower post that will have a low valve for hosing off your feet and, and your your uh, calves and all that and then an overhead cold water shower head that has a spring actuated valve so as long as you hold down the chain it sprays on you as soon as you let go it shuts off um, the good news is is we already have water at the pavilion area so that would kind of be somewhere close to the midpoint we'd have one a little south of there and one a little bit north there so it'll, it'll try to make it as convenient as possible of the beach users to have an opportunity to to shower or hose themselves off before they go to get in their car or to their next activity right so, and yeah. the, the signage about uh, vibrio education is the mock-ups being done now so those will be metal signs that will be posted as well to give people pointers and things they should consider before they get into the water and what they should do after that's great so. definitely needed well thank you since we have two people missing it's going to be a little short today but Thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.